Hi everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. So this video is yet another part in my Cloud Firestore and Python series. So this series actually is for complete beginners as well as people who are more advanced but actually interested in learning how to use Cloud Firestore with Python. So the series follows a certain order. I have already explained Cloud Firestore in depth in an initial video. That video is independent of Python or any programming language, so it really only talks about Cloud Firestore, the structure, and everything inside it. I also have a set of video that helps us set up um, a Cloud Firestore with Python, so it helps us set up the database as well as set up the client and the admin SDK. And the next part would be the actual CRUD part. So I have already the C, so the create part. So it's create, read, update, and delete. This video is going to be specifically about reading data from a Cloud Firestore database using Python. So without further ado, let's get started with actually reading data from the Cloud Firestore database with Python. So what do we mean when we say read data? When we say read data, we usually mean everything from actually getting all the possible data as well as you know, performing certain queries to retrieve certain documents. Maybe I want to retrieve all the people who have an age above 60. Maybe I want to retrieve all products that currently have a discount on them. So this has multiple applications. Um, reading data is essentially one of the main parts of any database ever. When you persist your data, you would always want to actually refer to it and really use it in your application. So enough talk. How do we do this through code? So just a quick overview, this is our Cloud Firestore database. This is some really, really primitive samples that we have of some data. Um, these are actually generated IDs by Firebase. These are actually IDs that I have set myself. So I have set this ID to be P1, I have set this ID to be P2, and they have different types of data as well as different data types. All right, so that's sort of our first starting point. Now, going back to PyCharm, so I have a PyCharm project that I've been using for this tutorial. The source code will be linked down below, so you can check that out. Otherwise, you can look here. So I already have other files for the other, you know, CRUD component. This file is actually independent, so I'm just gonna, you know, close everything to ease the confusion. And here's what we really have. So I'm just gonna erase all of this because I really want this to be, you know, firsthand, uh, hands-on. I want you guys to be coding with me or I want to really help you guys understand. So what you just saw a second ago is actually going to be posted on the GitHub uh, source code. So how do I read data uh, from the database uh, using Python? So the very th first thing that comes to mind is actually getting a document with a known ID. So I said before that here we have two types of documents, those that have a generated ID, generated by Firebase. This is related to both timestamping as well as um, some other, you know, other variables that go into this. And this is a unique randomly generated ID. Also, we have the IDs that we have set. So this is a known ID. You cannot possibly know this in practice. So if you have multiple users and you're pushing data, you will not be able to know this information. You will not be able to know this ID. However, if you store, for example, a person's name as the ID, then yeah, you would have some idea as to how this document is known. Also, you may store maybe uh, current variables around this, their ID, and you might already know that. So anyways, how do you really get this uh, document with a known ID? So I'm just going to say result. It's actually um, equal to db.collection. And our collection is called, we can see it's called persons. And I'm just going to persons.get and uh, actually not dot .get, so dot .document. And then what we're going to do is dot .get. So the dot .document here is a, returns a document reference. So a document reference is essentially a way for us to point to a certain document that we have in our database. So in this case, I want to get P1. So the person with ID P1. And what I'm going to do is that if result dot um, exists, because sometimes you never want to take this complete risk, especially when you're putting in the ID yourself. So there might not always be um, a result. So results dot to dict. So to dict is actually a function um, that we use to sort of print it in a dictionary format for us to actually take a look into the data. I'll show you guys how it looks like without the two dict. So let's try that actually first and let's run this. So running this, we see that we get a Google Cloud Firestore base document document snapshot object and no you know relevant information that we can't see. So you know just you need to convert it to two dict. And then 
here's what you have so you get occupation engineer name may address paris and all this information so going here to p1 we can see that this is the exact same information we were able to query p1 from the database you can actually try this for like one of the randomly generated ids however um in practice you may not really know this so i was just pasting this yes here we go now if i run this okay Oh, okay, I just messed up. Uh, this was supposed to be here. There we go. And yes, so here's the information that we asked for. So this is Jane, her age is 50, and her address is in Los Angeles. So this is really um, how we can get a certain document with a known ID. Now, what if I have, you know, multiple documents? So I'm just gonna comment this part out here. Okay, I have multiple documents and I want to get all of them in a specific collection, of course, in a collection. So here's what I'm going to do. Basically, I'm going to say docs is equal to db.collection persons.get. And then what I'm going to do is that for doc in docs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print doc.toDate. And now I can run this and actually see all of the documents that I have in my collection. So regardless of their ID, regardless if the ID is known or unknown, if it's generated or actually um, set by us, we were able to get all of the possible documents in this collection. So this is a good way for you to take a look into your database, make sure everything is actually working. Um, depending on the data you have for a certain application, you might actually need to get all of the data. Now, another thing you can do is we can actually start with a query. So what we can query first is the equal operator. So how are we going to do the equal operator? So I'm just going to copy paste this routinely because this is going to be very similar. And here, before I actually call get, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say dot where, and this is where I'm going to specify a condition, and then I'm going to say dot get. So in SQL, if you're familiar with SQL, you would say, so select person from, uh, you know, persons where, uh, actually select star from persons where age is greater than 40. So this is pretty intuitive. This is pretty similar. So now what we're going to say is we're going to say age, and we're going to say greater than, and we're going to say 40. And this is actually how we do it. So there will be three different parts, so three different strings. The middle one is actually an operator. Um, I did say equal here, so this is actually greater than, so you can try uh, equal or you can try greater than. So yeah, we can keep this to be greater or we can actually try equal, so it would be equal equal, which is, you know, very similar to virtually any programming language. So here what I'm doing is I'm going to the collection persons, I'm checking who here has their age equal to 40, and now this should actually be an integer because the uh, data type for the age is actually an integer. So whose age is actually equal to 40? And now what I'm going to do before I run is actually comment this out so that we don't have any double queries. So now I can run this and let's see the result. So now I get a bunch of people whose age is actually equal to 40. So we have four members in our database whose age is actually equal to 40. And that really helps. So another thing we can do actually is also put a greater here and try this part of the querying. And here we go. So now we got um, Jane, whose age is 50, and we got May, whose age is 52. So this is how basic querying works. They call this simple querying. So now we've learned, you know, equals and greater than. Now, obviously, other things you can try are equal, equal uh, not equal, greater than, less than, greater than or equal, or less than or equal. So virtually um, every type of comparison that is, you know, somewhat numerical, but you can also apply it to other things. Um, this works here. Now, moving a bit away from the integers, you can do this to strings as well. So what you would do here is, let's say here, uh, name is, you know, equal equal to, let's see, may. And now I can run this and I should probably get one data point whose name is actually in uh, may. And there we go. So we have name may here and this is all her sort of information. After that, another thing we can do is actually query for the arrays. So the reason I actually put these arrays to begin with is for this specific demo. So what do I mean by this? I mean that here, 
For Sam, who's ages 21, I have his socials. So his socials are YouTube, LinkedIn, and GitHub. And May, on the other hand, has Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So what we want to do is actually retrieve those socials. So we want to retrieve um, the uh, retrieve the different users based on those socials. So here's what we're going to do. Um, so I'm just going to copy paste this and then you know, comment it out and so that we can actually use it. So the cleaner version of this code is available in the source code on GitHub and is commented and everything is clear. And please let me know if you have any questions to begin with. So leave a comment or send me an email or, or anything like that. So here's um, what we're going to do. So here now we're checking for the array socials. And let's say I want socials to maybe, um, you know, contain, you know, let's say I want to get everyone who contains YouTube. So I want to see who actually has uh, YouTube. So how am I going to do this? I simply have to change the array contains. So the operator becomes array contains. This should be a string. So we're checking if the array contains a specific string YouTube. And now if I run the read data, what am I going to get? So um, I do not get any data points. This is because they're in lowercase. So Firestore is not friendly like that. So now let's see. There we go. So now we have the P1 person who has Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And we have the P2 person who has YouTube, LinkedIn, and GitHub. Now here I have obviously two results. Now I can maybe narrow this down to one result by changing this to LinkedIn. And now if I run this, I should get only one result. So that's really it for querying for the simple queries as well as for querying using the arrays so this is sort of nested information that we have inside each data point now another thing we can do actually is to query um using the in operator so i'm trying to cover as many operators as i can so here what i have is let me just paste so db.collection where and now we're going to change the where statement so what does the where statement here say for example, let's say I want everyone whose address is in either of the following. So London or Milan. And this should be a string. So now what I want is I want everyone whose address is in either of these two cities. So I'm not giving it only one option in this case. So now if I run it, uh, what have I done? Yeah, okay, dot get. Here we go. So now we have these two different data points and their different addresses. We can see one of them lives in Milan, one of them lives in London. And that's really it for really um, these queries. So that's really it for this video. I really hope it was useful for you. I really hope you were able to get something out of it and really learn how to read data from the Cloud Firestore database. So in this video, we covered how to read uh, data directly from a known ID, how to get all documents, how to cover uh, certain queries as well as you know more complex queries. There should be a separate video regarding compound queries in Compiler Store because they are a tad bit more complex. So they deserve their own video for that. And stay tuned for that. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a, leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you so much.